Okay, this is the second video on completing the square, and I, it's the last video on completing the square for this section. And we'll do some more completing the square in a later section. Actually, the very next section we'll do some. Um, so I have two examples on this page. The first one, which is my, my example two, is uh, to solve x squared minus 5x minus 10 equals zero. Now notice if it wasn't, if I didn't have all the terms, all the non-zero terms on one side of the equation, then I would have to do that first, right? But I did that and I've got a leading coefficient of one still. So I'm just doing an example here uh, where the middle term isn't, the coefficient isn't even, it's an odd, which will be half the time, right? It's an odd number. And that means that my capital B, my little b is minus five. My capital B will be half of that. So you have to remember the negative. You have to take that negative with you. So it's gonna be B is gonna be negative five halves. That's half of five, right? And B squared then, you have to square the numerator and denominator. Of course, B squared is always positive, of course. So that's gonna be 25 fourths. So that's what I need to add on both sides of the equation. Right, and notice I'd already moved the negative 10 term on the left to the right side and made it a positive 10, right? So now I'm gonna add the 25 fourths on both sides in the space that I left, right? There we go. Now the left-hand side factors. What does it factor as? I don't have to think about it. I don't have to try to figure out all the numbers. It's just gonna be X plus B. And then I'm gonna square that whole, that binomial. So B is negative, so it'll be X minus five halves, right? X minus five halves. See, it's always the, the big blue B. Okay, and then what happened on the right? Well, I had 10 plus 25 fourths right here, right? And I need to add those fractions, so I need to write this one as, as a fourth. So it's 40 fourths, right? You multiply by four over four, it's 40 fourths. So that's all I did. As long as I'm writing this out again, I, I changed the left side, right? By factoring it this way. And then I might as well adjust the 10 a little bit to make it easier to add to the 25 fourths while I'm at it. And then I just have one step left, which is just adding these two together. So that's 65 fourths. Not too difficult there. Right, now that gets me, that's completing the square. That gets me to where I can use the square rule. And so the square rule says you drop the square from the left and you get a plus or minus square root of the right hand side, right? Now notice the denominator of that will simplify. The square root of four is two. So remember, this is the same as the square root of 65 over the square root of four, right? That's six square root of 65, square root of four. 65, what is that? That's five times 13. So that's not gonna simplify. There's no, there's no uh, integer squared in there other than one and minus one, which doesn't help. So then I'm going to move this term over to the right, and make it a positive five halves so term, right? So it'll be, I'll just write it first, probably. Right? And notice they're both halves. So if I wanted to, I could leave it that way, but I could also write them over the same denominator if I wanted. Right? And that's kind of the common way to, a common way to write it. And of course, in Hawks, you would write those separate. Five plus square root of 65 over two, and then the five minus in a separate space. Okay, so that's the second example of completing the square. Now for the third, so that one had fractions in it, right? Because the middle coefficient was even. Now if the middle coefficient was a fraction already, you would just multiply the denominator by two which is the same as multiplying by a half, right? Taking half of it. Okay, if the leading coefficient is not one, then we need to divide it out and make it one. 
before we can go through this process. Because otherwise, as I mentioned before, the middle term has A in it as well, and that just gets too complicated. So here I have this, A is two, B is negative four, C is four, and I made it kind of easy where you don't get fractions. Um, but if I got fractions, I would just deal with them. It's the same exact process. So I'm gonna divide everything on by two. That means I'm dividing the left side by two and the right side by two. Since uh, the division will distribute, you just divide each term on the left by two, right? And you get that. And then I subtracted the two from both sides. In other words, move the two term to the right and it becomes a negative two term. And I left that space there because I have to add that B squared in there, the blue B, the big, big blue B. I write down what B is. It's half of, I wrote out how I computed it again. <laughs> it's half of negative two, which is negative one. And then I write down what B squared is. It's one. And that's what I put in that space above. So I, I add B, I add one to both sides. Right? Like that. The right side will be minus one or negative one. And the left side will factor as x plus b, which will be x minus 1, the quantity squared. Right? The negative 1 on the right just came from ne minus 2, or negative 2 plus 1, negative 2 plus 1. Okay, now we use the square rule. Drop the square from the left, and you get plus or minus square root of the whole right side, including the negative. Don't put the negative in front. It's inside the square root, okay? Which is i. Square root of minus one is i, right? Square root of negative one. And then I just added the one to both sides and I got one plus or minus i. Now, you could check that. You'd have to put it in the original equation right here and multiply it out. And you'd have to be careful multiplying it out, but it's not that hard of a multiplication. It's worthwhile, and it's practice, if you think about it, it's practice for the final when you have to multiply these things and do them right. And so I would just take one plus i, multiply it out. Remember, you're not squaring one and squaring i. You're actually using that binomial formula for squares again. One plus i, the quantity squared, is one squared plus two times one times i plus i squared, which is negative one, right? So that's good practice. So plug that in there and you should get a zero. I actually did this on a separate piece of paper. Okay, so that's the end of that. That's the end of completing the square for this section.